Hey, you are in the club, powered by Club Colors. We are stoked today. Are you into horse racing? Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I wish I knew what in the world I was doing? This is the episode that you have to listen to. This is going to be off the hook. We've got Scotty uh, Pick 6 McKeever on today. Hey, listen, by the way, In the Club is powered by Club Colors. Club Colors is a full-service brand management firm. Anything you can think of that you want to put a logo on, we have the capability of doing it. Concept and doorstep. We are your all-in-one solution, but it's not about us today. It's about Scotty. He's the founder, owner, and he is the expert at Equan Edge LLC, essentially taking technology and the the sport of kings, smashing them together and making it easy for folks, the everyday person like me, who normally was betting on horses based on whether or not they were wearing leg warmers or not. He has changed the whole dynamic, and he's making us smarter. Scotty, welcome to the show. Good to be here, guys. Good to be here. We've we've also got Chris Tassi on once again. Chris is big time into playing the ponies. He's really good at it. But now we're really playing with uh, an expert here, Chris. You got to be fired up today. Thanks for joining. Awesome. Happy to be here. What a great week to be here too. Kentucky Derby week. You got the Oaks on Friday and uh, the Derby on Saturday. It's my favorite weekend of the year. So let me set Scotty up a little bit, just so you guys listening to this podcast understand why this is relevant. First off, he's built a brand, right? He's built an organization and he's taking that SaaS type of platform, right? That is so uh, huge right now, especially folks that love content, right? This is big on LinkedIn, the SaaS companies. He's taking that same method and he's bringing it to a fantastic sport. But the way that he really came about was he was doing it on his own. And he combined the platform. So Scotty had a $1.2 million win at Del Mar. Um, and he's had several, several five figure and six figure pick six wins. Uh, Scotty, what is the magic? What's the trick? And how did you kind of get started into this? Was that at a young age? Were you out seeing the ponies with, uh, with your dad, your uncles or your mom? How, how did you get started? Well, I went down to uh, a track called uh, Fairplex Park in Pomona. It's now uh, now closed, but but uh, really where I got, I was about 18 years old and I got excited about, I went down to Del Mar and I made that drive down the five freeway. When I hit Del Mar, you smell the ocean. Uh, Chris, I don't know if you've ever been down to Del Mar, but it is a, an amazing place to go. And hey, I got the bug immediately. I knew I was done and and I really uh, started getting into pick sixes because I really um, enjoyed the part where, I could play for bigger money. So I would do all my handicapping uh, and then I would, of course, put my own money in as well. And a, a lot of times people aren't able to do that. But that was when we had a two dollar denomination. Now the game has changed. They're trying to reach the smaller players. And and uh, I understand part of it. But uh, I, so I don't get the chance to play pick sixes really much anymore, except on really big days. Yeah, and for those of you that don't know, a pick six is you have to pick the winner in six consecutive races. And you may think it's easy, but it's almost you think about the infinite amount of uh, combinations that happen because you have some races that have 12 horses, some that have six. But it's a fantastic vertical bet. And in a lot of ways, um, it, it will pay you out if you're right. And it's it, it's a great way to play the lottery with having some knowledge. And it gives you a great chance at some fantastic scores. And it's just fun to watch. And if you're alive, two, three, four in, you're cheering everybody. You're having beers. I mean, it's just a great. Great thing in the sport of horses. Ah, uh, yes. This is John Morris, host of In the Club, powered by Club Colors. I am so excited today to talk to you about our sponsor for this episode, SalesCast. SalesCast is the operating system for the B2B podcasting community of sales, marketing, and revenue professionals. They have an inclusive online community, courses, tutorials, events, guest matching, and even world-class managed production services. Their mission is is to connect 100 million sellers to the power of story. Thanks again, SalesCast. Enjoy the show. What I find fascinating just in, in betting alone, if you look at like a FanDuel or a DraftKings, how they've opened up to the everyday person who was playing fantasy and now they're betting and they've really simplified the process, right? They've made it so much easier. And of course, they've they've made it commonplace, right? You used to have to, 20 years ago, call a bookie, right? Now you can just hop on your phone and place a couple bets, you know, 
And maybe if you do ten dollars on a sixteen a sixteen baseball parlay, you could win a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, right? It's pretty hard to get six picks, but that's kind of the premise of what you've done is you've combined technology and the algorithm along with uh, your your knowledge and expertise. But as you mentioned, there's a lot of subjectivity to the 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 betting process and the handicapping process. Can you elaborate a little bit on what that is, what that means? So essentially, if I take it a step back, guys, so statistics versus metrics, essentially, right? So a statistic is just a single data point of data. Um, on its own, it really, if you think about it, doesn't tell you anything. How many races a horse has won, what level is it at, all that kind of stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, it's, but how many total races, let's just say, you need to know what types of races there, there are, how many total races the horse ran in, um, how strong the fields were, all that. When our algorithms look at statistics, they begin to create a metric. And that's the difference, right? And a metric is a, basically a system of measure to analyze the data that you have. A metric pretty much tells the entire story, whereas a statistic doesn't do that. It doesn't really tell you anything. It's a single data point. That's, that's fascinating because the everyday watcher, right, would not recognize that that horse running in a race maybe ran three right in in the last few races or the last few days or whatever it might be so and it's an animal and animals just like human beings get tired right if you look at any sports team if they go back to back to back a three-day road trip let's say right or there's a trip from new york to california and then they got to go play the dodgers right that's got to be factored into how you would think about that bet so talk to us about how you yeah. would factor that in and how the metrics tell that story more than a statistic does. Well, I love the that's a great lead in, by the way. Um, I call it cognitive load. Essentially, as it applies to horse racing, most of handicapping isn't using our creative part of our brain. The work is actually being poured into statistics, if you think about it. And so for most of us, that time and effort takes, um, you know, takes to do that homework is just way too much. And we take shortcuts because, because we're mentally exhausted, right? And um, with the use of metrics, you can actually focus your energy on the important part of, of handicapping, which is making good ticket selections, good wagers, things like that. Because as humans, we just make mistakes and the algorithms don't, they're not emotional. They don't make mistakes like we do. So, um, and we get mentally exhausted. And I think that's really important to know. You have to be aware of that. And then everyone feels it, but they might not understand what it does to you. Because when we're handicapping over all those statistics, first of all, it's a single data point. So we don't have a clue really what to do with that if you think about it. Whereas the metrics, that's a different story. You're not getting as, as mentally exhausted and you really enjoy it more. And I think Chris will tell you, because Chris uses Equine Edge, that it's just a lot more fun to handicap. You're not as tired. You can play way more races our churn at Equine Edge, our customers tell us they bet four times the amount of money than they normally would bet. Yeah, and I think the the, the point there is when I used to go to Off Track without Equine Edge, what I used to use is a daily racing form. And if you open it up, it's just a bunch of stats, a bunch of numbers, buyer numbers, you know, and what you're looking for is you're trying to recognize patterns in in those numbers. Uh, to Scotty's point, the, the thing that ends up happening is you're sharp in the morning, you know, you're nobody nobody's there yet and then all your friends get there everyone starts talking and you know regardless of what anybody will tell you the ability to recognize those patterns unless you are just locked in the entire day starts to fade pretty quickly the thing i love about equine edge is regardless of what you like to play and i'm a, a pace and class guy so meaning i like to uh preview and think about how is the race going to be run so are there a lot of fast horses that are going to be at the front that end up burying themselves and then somebody from the back is going to close and win or is there lone speed? So one horse that has a speed advantage that will just win because nobody, nobody's going to be able to run with them or class, right? So John, you know, it's uh, major leagues versus minors and, you know, just kind of understand there's some minor leagues that are better than other minor leagues. So just minor league isn't a fair description. And I think the, the strength of race um, number in equine edge has been one of the most helpful things for me to, and it also uh, levels out the playing field between different tracks. So folks that are in the game and know a lot about the game will tell you shippers from Turfway to this track to Churchill. I mean, there's a lot of tracks that um, are incredibly um, tougher than other tracks. And, but on paper, you may see a horse that has won five straight 
at parks or somewhere that has that's nothing like Keeneland or Kentucky Downs or anything like that. So it really levels out the playing field for folks that don't have that that long term knowledge or have uh, the ability to spend a lot of time with the game to where you can get into it and you have a fair shot immediately. And I would say it's not even a fair shot. I think you had, you have a much better shot, especially with uh, the program, because it gives you what their top three picks are. I don't use that as I'm going to bet this, that at least helps me if I, if I don't have time, at least I have an answer and I can, I can go for that answer. And while I'm developing my own strategy with the system. It's all about playing the odds, right? And Hey, by the way, if you're listening to this, just a little, little uh, note here, we're going to get some picks here at the end of this. So you got to stay with us. We want you to know all about Scotty. We want you to know all about Equan Edge, but you got to stick with us. And maybe there's a shot for you to make a little bit of money because we got an expert on here who's going to help us out. So stay with us. Hey, by the way, I wanted to ask you this question. You know, in sales and communication, we always talk about the best are able to take the most complex thing and simplify it so that it's understandable for any audience, for any prospective client. You know, it's like, uh, I like to say when I'm talking to salespeople, explain it to me like I'm six years old, right? I want to know, can you take something super complex and make it simple for me? Because remember, I'm not an expert in what you sell. I'm the buyer, right? So what I find fascinating is in technology is how you take this unbelievably complex thing. And Chris talked about the exhaustion. Looking at those uh, those programs with all of the races and all the black ink on there and all the charts and percentages and numbers, it's it's almost a turnoff when you go to the track and you get that. It's like it's like gosh, this is exhausting. So now I'm just gonna if I'm gonna bet, I'm just gonna have fun. I'm just gonna guess, right? So you've taken something ultra complex and simplified it. How did you do that? And what's been the 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 struggle or the challenge in being able to take that complexity and simplify it? So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, when I would just play one track and I would handicap a pick six, I would handicap for eight to 12 hours and I was just exhausted. And then I would go put my ticket together and I and and I would lose one race and I'd get five out of six. And the horse that won, I realized that I just made a mistake in my betting and it used to frustrate the hell out of me. And so I, I said, there has to be a better way. And the first thing I did was I hired this 18 year old phenom kid uh he was just he still is just unbelievably brilliant and and i said i want you to create me a mock race a simulated race and so we took all the the data in the in in the running lines and call times and then pre i pressed one button and it actually ran a simulated race for each call most races have four calls and it would run that and it kind of started that way this was years ago probably i want to say 15 to 18 years ago and um, and that's how it all got started. And then I started getting in, into metrics and class was my biggest thing. Like Chris, I'm a, a, a pace player, not a speed player, not a time player. There is no time on our website, but a pace player, which is different and a class player. And that's the reason why I put our pace number and our SOR, which is strength of race. Uh, that's why I put it next to each other, because they kind of correlate, because if you have a horse that has a good pace, but it has a low SOR strength of race, then maybe that horse is probably more likely to stop, right? But you do know it's probably going to have the lead, but it's more likely to stop. Or if you have a class horse that maybe is like the third or fourth top pace number, but has the highest SOR, strength of race, then it might be on the lead. And so you can get that. But what's great about all these metrics is we've got breeding metrics. We've got strength of race metrics. We've got pace metrics, win percentages. We've got an Equinedge morning line that's incredible. So, and they're all on one page fascinating you know um to the everyday novice right it's like i want to get lucky right it's about getting lucky to pros and professionals it's not about luck at all and to your point right it frustrated you that the one that you won you got lucky on right so you you took that frustration and turned it into a business i find that fascinating what's been the biggest challenge or struggle of getting a business going because you know this is something that uh, you're, you're, you're taking beyond the technicality of what you do and you're turning it into a brand and a business that's going to continue to grow and scale and employ people. What's been the most challenging part of that? Well, it's been the industry's lack of not wanting to get into the 21st century, essentially. Um, and also some of the players and they've been doing it a long time and you're learning something new. 
I think that's challenging for all of us, to be fair. Um, but I figured that over time, see, I, I will tell you this, our retention at EquinEdge is insane. You've never seen anything like it. It's, it's pretty impressive. We, we have a 90% retention. People don't leave our site. But capturing people and closing the deal has been a little bit, uh, proven a little bit tougher. So um, we have work to do. I spend hours on YouTube, believe it or not, looking at navigation on websites, user interfaces. That's all I do now because even a simple letter here or a number here, all these things, colors, uh, tabs, buttons, links, these things all make such a huge difference in the user experience. And it's ironic that, you, John, you said the six-year-old because I all I do is you say six-year-old, not seven, five. I can't Six-year-old. <laughs> I want to make sure, guys, that a six-year-old can use this website. And we aren't there yet, but we're getting there. And one of the things that I'm really proud of is, is we're getting a lot of poker players, uh, a lot of um, sports bettors that are that are using our website because there is no way in hell that this younger generation that gets things at their fingertips in seconds is going to use the past performances that I grew up with. They're not going to do it. Now we're talking branding. And by the way, if you want to sponsor or advertise on a site, one with 90% retention, probably a good place to invest your money. What do you think about that? You were going to say something, Chris. Yeah, I was, I was just going to bring up this Scotty that where I learned, you know, I was fortunate enough, uh, 13 years ago, I ran into a guy, Rick Henley, um, a friend of mine at, at the off track here in Oak Brook, Illinois. And Jason Hart's another one of my good friends at, and we've been friends ever since then. But I was just a kid walking in, you know, I, I needed something to do. And luckily, you know, he'd been, uh, he had been in the game for a long time, learned from his dad. And he kind of took me under his wing and showed me what a, what a form was, you know, up, I, I was just looking at the big black number. I'm like, that means it's fast. Why didn't it win? And then, you know, a lot of folks that walk in and we see him, they walk in, it's usually Derby days, the only day that they walk in. Um, and if they don't win, you know, they're, they're kind of um, disillusioned by the sport or if, you know, it doesn't make sense to them. Right. So I think th this is a tool where at least it starts to make sense. And the fun part is when you get it right. And I kid you not. I mean, uh, there's times when, you know, you figure out a pick three, pick four, pick five. And it's not the favorite that gets you really excited. It's that 12 to one that on paper looks like it has no business in there. It's never run on this specific surface. Why is it there? And you look at some of the deeper numbers and it wins by 15 lanes. And it's like, I did it. And then you're hooked. And then it, it's so much fun. But it is, Scotty, I appreciate what you're doing for the industry because, you know, the, the biggest risk to the industry is that it, there's not an inflow. I think you're absolutely right. And, you know, right now, sports are the big ones. You have DraftKings. You've got, uh, you know, FanDuel, all these folks. TVG, I think, is doing a pretty good job with their app. And they absolutely. continue to make some improvements. But it's just getting inflow and it's educating people on how many things there are involved in the sport. And it's not just about a horse winning. There's so many other components to the actual race. By the way, if you don't oh, know this, Scotty became, up. sorry, Scotty, I was just going to say before you say that, Scotty became an analyst and a broadcaster for TVG as well. So there's some yeah. credibility for you. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, you know, I was just going to go back to what Chris was saying about, you know, if you take somebody to the track and you introduce them to past performances and they're using that and then they don't win right away. Well, I tell you what the problem is. It's even more than that. What the problem is, is they're being told what to play because they're certainly not going to learn something like that right away unless you grew up with your dad using the past performances and stuff like that. So what happens is it's like this, guys. I relate it to if you're in the passenger seat and you've never been somewhere before and somebody else is driving, are you actually paying attention to where you were going? So if you had to get back, could you get back? No, because you're not taking ownership. This is why we've created subjective tools because it's important that – uh, and I'm going to take you back again. So I would go down to Del Mar. I'd have these parties and over at Del Mar and, and we'd have these VIP parties and there would be 30 people in there. And I'd be the only one handicapping with my head down in the form. And I'd be I'd be this. And they're all waiting for me to just tell them two minutes before the race. OK, I like this horse. They go bet it. We go do it again. I didn't I didn't socialize with anybody. I my day was long. All I did was have my head down in the form. They didn't enjoy this. As a matter of fact, I had a friend of mine say to me, he said, Scott, first time at the track, he goes, watching you all day long was torture. I would never come back. I don't know how anybody would want to do this. And so whereas now I can use my mobile, I can go to the track. I, somebody says, who do you like? I'm like, here you go. Use Equine Edge. 
it, it, all the data is there. This is subjective. Take ownership and do it yourself because it's very easy. And the cool part is, right, you get to take in the whole experience now, especially if you've gone to a horse. If, if you're going to a horse race, right? Like if you're going to Derby, when he, I, hearing Chris talk about it, I'm a golf guy and a baseball guy, right? So that, that's my thing. But to hear both of you talk about something that's your passion, and Scotty, for you to take your passion and turn it into a business, brilliant. Have the utmost respect for that and love love people that have that entrepreneurial spirit. It lights me up. But what's amazing is um, you're right. Those those like uh, folks that are like really into the sport, they never see the sport, right? They see they see the run. They never take in the rest. The rest no. of the part. So now you're actually helping the brand of horse racing because the brand of horse rating, racing is about creating an ultimate feeling, not just the exactly. race and winning the money. It's about the whole experience, right? Chris talks about it. He lights up. He's smiling right now. No, you're spot on. You're absolutely just spot on, right, Chris? I mean, that's exactly it because if they don't go over and, and handicap the horses themselves, and be able to do it quickly without having to learn for 10 years how to use past performances, you literally could learn this in five minutes. I mean, of course, not as much as you, you're gonna, as you learn more, but you have enough right there. So we do a lot of promotions with tracks where we give people for free that day that pop into the track and, and they use this and they're actually having a good time, they're winning. And when you pick your own horse and you win, you're done. You are completely hooked. And one of the things, Scotty, so, so two real quick things. I remember Derby, seven years in a row, me and you know, my buddies went down to Derby. Your experience with Del Mar is exactly my experience at the Derby. They'd all be drinking their mint juleps, and I'd be sitting somewhere with the form, getting, you know, giving them picks. It, it's a lot of work, but it's 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 gratifying. And one of the things I do want to bring up, guys, for Equine Edge, um, I was a little bit shocked by it. I thought, I thought it was just a, kind of a marketing ploy, but they do a coaching call. You can sign up for free on a coaching call. You join the call. It's a Zoom call. And it's literally somebody teaching you the various angles and how to look at the tool. And you can ask questions. It's a and furthermore, the the other thing, and I was mentioning this to John, you know, Scotty goes live either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. It's normally Saturday or Sunday. And he'll handicap live for the community. And to watch the chat section, like people will give out their picks. You know, Scotty's giving out his picks. And then when the community hits it, it's boom, boom, boom. Well, Scotty's it's version of exhaustion is different than most people. A good time. Right? His his version of exhaustion <laughs> is different than most people. Seven hours straight streaming. I mean, I do a half hour podcast. I, I got to go take a nap. But I'm getting super old. Underneath here is is gray hair, I wish. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, my, my, my last show was um, was uh, this past Saturday. And, and we did, uh, I want to say, nine and a half hours on that show. Um, because I was doing a different show and then I realized that I was I had to do the golden hour, which is an amazing wager, by the way, with Astrona Group and Santa Anita between Santa Anita and, and and Golden Gate Fields, where the takeout is only like 15 percent. So just a little plug for them. But it's it's really low. But um, and that sequence of four races goes in about 50 minutes long, which makes that fun. So what we do is we cover that um, within our stream. And I didn't realize that I had that show because it was a big day. And they had 12 races, both at Golden Gate Fields and Santa Anita Park. And I already had been going on for five hours. Uh, so we went on another four and a half hours. So part of scaling is to continue to uh, update and improve not just the technology and the platform, but who it's utilized for and the capabilities, who it can actually benefit. And one of the things we were talking about before we started recording was um, the money ball analogy in that you know, statistical data and metrics and all these things were utilized in order to help professional athletes understand their strengths and weaknesses, but moreover to help GMs and scouts look at a professional athlete different than the eyeball test, right? And so, you know, when you look at a professional baseball player, for instance, when you, you can hear the sound off the bat and you could see the big power and you could see the the velocity on the ball, but that doesn't necessarily define how that person will play or how they pitch or how they help their team. Wins above replacement has been a big conversation in baseball. Uh, so what you're now talking about is how to you utilize your platform to actually help the teams that run the horses and the jockeys to understand how to win a race better. Talk to us a little bit about that. 
So, um, you know, it's still subjective, right? So that's the thing that we want it to be. Otherwise, I could come over and say, you know, bet the 11 horse and everybody bets it and the horse goes off at one to five. So it's definitely subjective at the same time. But don't forget, we're giving breeding metrics. We're giving strength metrics, win metrics. And so now you just have to kind of make a decision a little bit on your own. But you still need those metrics, just like in Moneyball. That's awesome. You know, um, the, the uh, race is coming up. And Chris has been completely excited about talking about this. Just curious, when you look at this derby coming up, what's the excitement level? Is this going to be comparative to maybe some of the better ones that we've seen based on the, the, the horses entering the races, who's, who's riding those horses, and just the overall teams? Like, are, Should we expect a big day Saturday? Or will it be you know, just kind of a... a, a you know, run of the mill race, or is this going to be a big time thing with maybe an explosive winner we haven't seen before? Well, this is what I think. It's going to be wide open. You're you're seeing some horses like Wide Aberio who who won the Florida Derby and, and and did that. And this horse is, of course, won four out of five races. So this horse is going to take a lot of wagering. As a matter of fact, the Equine Edge Morning Line in our futures is nine to two on this horse. It's eight to one on the Odds Makers Morning Line. But I think you, you've got some long shots. You've got this horse, Morello, who won the Gotham by four and a half lengths, is undefeated uh, for Steve Asmussen. I, I, Steve Asmussen could, could do very well uh, in this. But I, th- I, don't think there's any, I don't think there's any horse in here that you can key in on. I really don't. And that's why I like this, and I think it's going to be big. I think a lot of people are excited about this. Uh, of course, um, you've got uh, Cyberknife, who I'm kind of liking a little bit for Brad Cox, uh, who won the Arkansas Derby pretty easily and this horse has won two in a row and coming into some form i think the way you want to approach the derby one of the ways anyways is is look at the trouble line for horses that have had you know problems or or legitimate excuses and then these are young horses they started off as two-year-olds many of them or or light three-year-olds and so they can really mature in this young age right so look for some of these horses like this cyber knife for Brad Cox, that seems to be really improving right now and and, and filling in, in in his body. Is there something to catching the momentum? Yeah. Like when you there, look, there, you look at championship yeah. teams, they always talk about you got to get hotter at the right time. Who's hot right now yeah, at the right there time? Is. There is. You can you can look at like for, for on our side, anyways. You would look at the SOR to see is the horse facing better and better, and how has he done against those horses? Like you can look in, at our strength of race and go, okay. The numbers from one to one hundred. Here's a horse that that had a uh, sixty six SOR in uh, the last race and and won by a nose. And now the current race SOR is an eighty. So how is that sport, that horse supposed to improve in in that grade of a number? That's one way we utilize the uh, the strength of race. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm, I'm doing that as as well for this race. I like a horse called Charge It, and this horse Charge It actually it's his third race. Uh, for Todd Pletcher, and he probably wishes he had a couple more races under his belt. But that being said, the horse is almost undefeated and really ran a good race in the Florida Derby and broke 10th and went from a 54 SOR when it broke its maiden by eight and a half lengths to a 78 SOR and handled it. That's a really good sign of a horse maybe that out will outrun its odds. Uh, so Charge It is the is one of the horses I'm looking at as a long shot. Charge It, writing it yeah, John, down. By the way, one of the... <laughs> One of the things let, let's let's throw a monkey wrench into the entire thing is they're predicting uh, maybe there's rain that hits on Friday and Saturday, and if you've got a wet track or a muddy track, everything is up for grabs because there's certain horses, and Scotty can explain this a lot better than I can. There's certain horses that are much better bred for wet versus uh, uh, dry, fast tracks. Uh, so that's another thing that Equine Edge gives you is there's a GSR number that it, uh, genetic strength rating, if I'm not mistaken, and you can actually click into the horse and it tells you which horses would do better on a wet surface re- versus a dry one. So you can kind of start to lay out all these scenarios and then you're prepared. It just, you know, whatever, whatever the weather does, you're ready to go. There was a movie well, when I was growing up. That, sorry, go ahead. You, no, sorry, John. I was going to say, you know, you can use our, what we call our GSR uh, plus, tab and and by doing that you'll see horses that are really good on on uh just on the there's a tab that gives the number from one to 100 and then there's a specific where you sort it and it gives you the distances so you can see who's best to go along 
believe it or not, a horse like the 14 horse Pioneer. Oh, no, well, it's 14 in my futures, but Pioneer of Medina. This horse also for Todd Fletcher. Unbelievable wet breeding in this horse. Plus, this horse wants to go long. And um, and so I, I think that this horse, this could be a, a long shot look as well. But Charge It has some really good turf, uh, not turf breeding, but uh, distance breeding as well as uh, wet breeding. In the Club is powered by Club Colors. Club Colors is the premium marketing solution for all branded apparel and promotional products utilized to drive your brand awareness and brand success. From concept to doorstep, Club Colors can source over 9 million different product solutions, decorate your logo, create custom kitting solutions, manage all logistics, and build, manage, and curate your company online store. The full, comprehensive, all-in-one solution for your brand. Our brand promise is right solution, right place, right time. Allow Club Colors to create an inspiring brand experience for you and your team. Check us out at www.clubcolors.com. We're talking about mutters. There was a movie when I was growing up. You know how you see like a line even at a young age when you're growing up? It was with Rodney Dangerfield. And uh, he was always at the playing the track, right? He was always betting the horses. And I remember him saying his father was a mutter, his mutter was a mutter. So that yeah. just sticks out. I, I don't know why this whole conversation has got me thinking his father was a mother, his mother was a mother. Uh, so if you if you are now uh, going to listen to this on Thursday, we're going to get a prediction here. So you can go on uh, Equin Edge and you can utilize the app and you can utilize that platform and get in the game and have a chance to win. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, I've got two questions. Uh, so a couple of the guys I play with sent me – um, specifically, they want your thoughts on a couple of horses, Scotty. So I'll give right. you the one I'm most interested in, and it's all based on what I saw in the Breeders' Cup and what I saw in the UAE Derby. Japan has been doing just incredible in terms of training jobs. Now, I know the, U the UAE Derby winner has done absolutely nothing in the Kentucky Derby, but um, you know there's some breeding that would suggest that. Uh, so I'm referring to Crown Pride, who also drew the seven hole, which is not a bad post for the Derby. Um, any thoughts on that horse? And by the way, it's going to be probably 20 to one odds, but is, are you seeing anything interesting as it relates to how the, the, the Japan trainers are training their horses and does this horse have a shot whatsoever? In crown pride. Yep. Um, I think the horse deserves a, a, a look, right. But at the end of the day too, when it, when, um, when it comes down to it, I just like the uh, the American horses. I like the domestic horses for for the breeding on this. Um, I think sometimes in in some of the Breeders' Cup races, you'll see some of these long shots coming in from other places. But when it comes to winning a race like this, um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to uh, some of the domestic horses. I'll just the leave other it one at was that. Taba. No, huh? I like that. That means toss. Yeah. That means toss that horse. <laughs> is what, that yeah. means. what about, by the way, Taba is another interesting one, right? His only run three horses, lightly raced, three uh, if I'm not mistaken, coming yeah. out of, out of California and beat Messier. Messier is probably going to be one of the top four. Um, any thoughts on Taba? Um, yeah, I, I, but I'm not really a fan of the, um, of the, of the races that Messier has come out of. So I, um, I think that that horse ran a huge race, but I don't think the winner is going to come from the California races. Okay. And last but not least. Um, so the one I've been on a little bit, Crown Pride is my long shot, but the other one I think has a really good shot is White Abario. Uh, really love uh, tactical speed, love where that horse likes to sit. Um, and got a nice draw. I, I, I think it's it's not in a, in a terrible spot. But thoughts on that horse? I I love this horse. Absolutely love this horse. I think you know winning the first of all won the Holy Bull for fun. Um, this horse only had one bad race. I mean, otherwise it would be under. I don't know what happened um, over at Churchill Downs in the uh, Kentucky uh, uh, Jockey Club. Uh, I am not really sure what happened. That was just a really poor performance. So I think I, I think something went wrong. I don't know what trouble it's, it came on again for show. Uh, it might have been green. It was the third lifetime race and got it. Got I will say this with whatever trouble that horse had got a third place finish in six tries um, or, or by six lengths, excuse me, against 10 other horses. So and then comes back and, and just blows, blows away them in the and the and the holy bull. 
and then and then really was impressive in the Florida Derby. This horse has only had five races. I think this horse is coming in to a first of all, it's nine to two on the Equinedge morning line. I think I think White Aberio is gonna that's gonna be my pick for the Derby. What's the pick for the Derby? What is it? Say it again. White White Aberio. White Abario. White Abario. I love it. Why to borrow you? Scotty, I want you to imagine with us for a second. Let's just pretend. Okay. Let's say that the yeah. whole industry called you up and said, Scotty, you are now in charge of the direction of the industry. It's it now You now have to modify and improve the brand. We need to create better brand awareness. We need more attention. We need more people to come out to the track. We, we need to make it more family friendly. We need to get people involved in the overall industry. What are the three things that you would do? Well, first thing as a commissioner, because I mean, if you look at if you look at our you know major sports, the NFL, NHL, you know Major League Baseball, all that I mean, they have a commissioner, and that's the that's the thing because everybody comes together in the best interest of yes, their their own their own um, team and. And um, but at the same time, there's a commissioner that comes over and says, hey, this is what's also best for the NHL or best for horse racing. And I think that's the biggest disconnect that we have is that, yes, people are trying to improve their brand, but they're 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 really not necessarily trying to improve horse racing. And, and that's the major disconnect. And I'm not sure that horse racing can get there if that doesn't happen. The other major factor is, I think, what we're doing, and that is with the handicapping side, because I think that, you know, uh, and, and and believe me when I tell you, I, this is nothing against the form at all. I mean, it's just that past performance data in this day and age is not going to work moving forward. And I think everybody knows that. And I think that what we're doing, we're the first to market and, um, and we're going to stay up. We are a technology company, not a marketing company. We are not going to lose track of that. I mean, we are a technology company and we're going to stay that. And we've got products, new products. We can scale this company tremendously. That's the great thing about it. If we were a stat company and I said to you, how are we going to scale a stat company? Come up with another stat? There's so many new things that we're going to be able to do with Equinex that we're doing that are groundbreaking for horse racing. So that's number two that you would you would definitely need. Um, and, and, you know, and also like when on my show, thank God, we've got a lot of support from some of these tracks and they're letting us show live streaming. So just like in poker as an example, right? When did poker really become popular? When we were able to see what they had, the, the, what these professional players had they in their hands. They could lift their hand up, and right? They, right? And then we watched how they played. Yeah, you and then played we along. Felt like we, could, we played along, and then we felt like we could do that. Well, that's what I'm doing on my shows. We built an amazing community. You know, there's some people that have become fans of mine and some of the other people that have done shows for Equine Edge. And they become fans, but they also go, I can do that. And at the same time, we're using the Equine Edge platform. So they're learning and seeing how I'm doing it. That's the entire point is that they'll learn and they'll go, I can do that. If a poker player or a sports better is looking at that, they go, you know, that's pretty dope. I can do that. So I think that um, that's part of it as well. You are so accurate in that. And that if you what a great analogy with Texas Hold'em. Like, look at all of the stars now that now are, like, making it to Vegas to play in that. And, you know, they started watching folks on, you know, ESPN, the Ocho, uh, play, playing uh, playing cards. And next thing you know, now it's like it's got its own channel. If you look at Comcast, it's got uh, the what the um, what do they call it? The Heartland uh, series. They've got fo it's constantly being televised. And what that's done is it's helped people that were just everyday players learn enough from the pros to start to compete, which actually for the pros is a benefit because it increases the purse because if more people are playing, more advertising dollar come in and it makes the purse bigger. It grows across the board. The Tiger Woods effect. Golf was great already, but man, when he came in, big time, Nike came in, right? And getting Nike to come into golf changed the game. I mean, it completely changed the game. Changed the game. So that's right. And brought money. And by the way, brought money for everybody. Everybody also raised the level. Right. So then all the players look at they're all better than what they used to be because Tiger raised that standard, that level. Right. Andre, you think of Andre Agassi, you think of Pete Sampras, that competition in, in tennis for, for American tennis has not been the same, in my opinion. I mean, you had Venus and Serena, you know, they did something, but um, 
But I don't think they were as dynamic as Andre was. Like when Andre retired, I pretty much stopped watching tennis. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. And, you know, nobody else has that kind of hair. That's the other thing. You got to have that mane of hair. That is <laughs> very right. helpful. See how I took the I horse mane hit, and I the way. applied it to tennis? You see how I did that? Go ahead, Chris. John, one of the things that, you know, Derby Day, we normally have our seats reserved at off track. And the biggest question that gets asked when people walk in is, how do I read this thing? Right? They get handed a piece of paper and they're, you know, one through 20. And they see the numbers and then they just, I think education and removing the mystique around, um, you know, what does it take to feel like you're participating and not just guessing. And th those are, that's a very distinct thing. I think, you know, to Scotty's point, if you feel like you know why you picked that instead of, I just picked the number. And by the way, picking numbers, I, I'll tell you, one of the biggest Kentucky Derby scores for the general public was the year that I'll have another one is everybody bet I'll have another and it won. Right. So, but to feel like you're participating and not just taking a guess, I think would bring in a whole different generation of people and it'll make it fun, you know, where, you know, everybody can compare angles. Um, so no, I think you guys are doing just a great thing. The other thing I love is Scotty gives his product away. The first week is free. So it's, it's not like, Hey, you got to pay to play. It's pay when you're in subscribe to it, watch our free content, join the coaching calls and just give it a whirl. And, um, you know, 90% retention rate tells you the quality of the product. And, you know, you also, what you also hear is just a uh, relentless approach to, we're going to continue to improve and somebody that cares about the industry. Cause in a lot of ways, to so a lot of folks that have been doing this for a long time, and I'm not one of them, but people that have been doing it for a long time, the biggest fear is that the industry is going away. And it's sad to see, right? There's tracks closing left and right. And it's sad because a lot of folks have careers that are based on it. And we're not just talking about people that are betting, but people behind the scenes that don't get the attention and that, you know, this is their day in, day out. And they do take care of these animals at such a high level. And, you know, Scotty, you've been around these people for a long time and you can speak to, you know, how much care there is, you know, behind the scenes. Yeah, I've owned many racehorses and and the love for them is yeah, is incredible. They take care, these animals are well taken care of. Most of them really love running. This is what they love to do. They were bred to do. Um, as far as the tracks closing, though, guys, a lot of I, I don't think horse racing is going anywhere, but they the, a lot. There was too many tracks to begin with. There really were. And it's just you 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 couldn't bet on all of them. I mean, on a, on a weekend, there, there would be, you know, 50 tracks. It's just too many. So, you know, it, 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 so I think that it's going to be fine, but, you know, I think the handicapping materials like we're doing now is going to, you know, algorithms and metrics and things like that. That's the wave of the future, more modernization as well. Um, uh, the community is a huge part of this entire thing. I think more shows like I'm doing, but, um, I, and, and this is honestly my opinion, it's hard to do an online show, one, if you don't have approval to show the live streaming, and two, it's hard to do a show, um, not only the live streaming, but what what platform are you gonna use? Are you gonna paste the past performances on the screen? I, I think Equine Edge is the only thing that actually works in that format. That's really what I believe. And so our goal is to do more shows. So we're gonna end up doing, doing more and more shows and have more content like that. And the community is just building for Equine Edge and growing and they're, our players and are just extremely passionate, very passionate like I am. And and you'll see that if you go to the show, it's Equine Edge Live on YouTube. It you'll see that. Chris, you know, I mean, they're very passionate and it's a lot of fun. And when when the group of people wins, we average about 300 concurrent people on average per show. And when you go there and see these people all booms, 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 the hitting and stuff like that, and having fun and uh, it's really a lot. It's really great. Really great. We had one. We had one woman. A woman. We have so many women that are handicappers and using Equine Edge because they're they're smart. I mean, they get it. Like, hey, what? We're stubborn guys. You know, they're like the women are like, what are you? I, I, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this. And they go in there and they use it. And we had one of them. Her name was Cindy. She won over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in two shows. Wow. It was amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So I have a, I'm going to pitch yeah. you an idea, right, on how to grow the industry. Just stay with me on this okay. one here for a second. Okay. And if it's it. already done, then I'm going to feel foolish and we'll just cut this. All right. But should here, I write it down? You probably should. It's that good. <laughs> okay. So what if 
the horse had like a little cam. Every horse had a little camera on it, and it was tied back to a virtual reality. Okay. Where in the virtual reality, folks could actually have the feel of what it feels like to run that race on that horse. So maybe it's on the jockey, right? And it's 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 the feeling exactly watching how fast it's going and things buzzing by and the the bouncing and everything, right? It goes into it. But in the virtual reality, you're also sitting on a chair that is tied to the feeling of that horse, right? Let's talk about getting people really into <laughs> okay. it. And this is not your everyday Thursday night <laughs> bar bull ride, right? This is your winning a Kentucky Derby in your family room. I'd buy that chair. Who's in? There's going to be a bunch of capital lining up. By the way, John, the, the, I will tell you, the jockey cam, there's certain races that have it. Generally, it's the big races. You'll have a couple of jockeys uh, strapped. But in it's not bench. virtual reality, though, Chris. No. We're talking virtual reality with a chair, guys. With a chair. I mean, you could be, Chris, you could be drinking a Modelo riding on the winning horse. <laughs> Listen, by the way, I'm telling you, I don't think they have it for this year, but if they offered a metaverse type of thing where I could sit in virtual reality, pick the horse you want to ride for the derby, and it goes live, and you're on with that horse, that'd be pretty damn cool. Yeah. I'm not as dumb as I look. I don't don't any, answer uh, that, Scotty. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, it sounds like a great idea to me. I, I'm in. I'm yes, in. Yes, I knew it. So all you venture capitalists out there, if you want to DM Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, we do have a uh, – so one of the brand promises, it's not really a brand promise that happened after hours, but we talked about when this company gets to a certain revenue lo uh, level, we wanted to buy a horse that will run in the Kentucky Derby. Okay. Um, so odds so of that are very you, so here, here's how we here, Here's how we do it. So one of the, one of the features that we're going to have – I have it now, and, um, and, and I'm messing with it a little bit, but it needs some tweaking. It's not there yet. But essentially, you're going to be able to, as, as you know, you can look at the GSR Plus. And it, basically what it is, is it's three generations of a horse's family and how they've done, what levels they've won at. It's really, it's a, it's a grid. It's really cool. It shows you what surface they're going to be best at. And then it specifically shows you the different distances they'll be best at. Longer, shorter, but it gives you exact distances. Well, we've created something where you can put the sire... So it's called progeny predictor. And you can put the sire, you can put the dam. And then by doing that, it's going to give you the GSR plus grid as to what that baby will be. And you can also do this at sales. So in these sales, they're paying, yep. if you get a, uh, from one to 100 is the GSR number. And so you get horses that are in the 70s and 80s. Those are usually the horses. If you were to look at the GSR grid, Chris, you're going to see that most of those horses are in the 70s and 80s on that grid. Whereas... You know, that those yep. are really high. So when you go to a sale, those are horses are selling for a million, two million dollars. But sometimes you find these horses that maybe don't have the best breeding, but their grid is 70s and 80s. And you find a horse for twenty, thirty thousand dollars and you have the next Kentucky Derby winner. That's my plan. All right. All right. Fine. Yours is a little better than mine. Your plan's a little better than mine. That's fine, Scotty. I'm new to this. Okay. All right. It's Scotty, a deal. Then. We're doing it. Wasn't that the story? Wasn't that the story with California Chrome? I mean, that was a claiming horse or something, right? It wasn't. It wasn't a million dollar purchase or anything like that. No, I think they bought it at a sale. I, I want to say, but it was a. It, but they didn't pay a lot of money for California Chrome. Yeah, I mean, it's rare, by the way. Yeah. I've already told everybody our best chance is to buy into a horse that is, um, that looks like it's going to be in the Derby, but even then, it gets super expensive and all. That and no, but nobody's selling shares in those horses usually, unless you're paying lots of money. I think no. the best chance is going to a sale, but having an idea that maybe the 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 gsr is really going to be really good overall on this horse and then and then maybe getting a good deal on a horse that that's that really again that's my plan and chris scotty are you open to being an advisor are you open to being an advisor for club colors when we go to the set of sales 100 percent. actually I, super I, fun. I, that sounds no that's actually kind of a thing that we're we're talking about doing and getting into as well using the gsr um we're thinking about doing that going hey we'll go to a sale with you and uh, we'll help you pick out some, some horses. So, and, and then uh, maybe charging a fee for doing that. That's kind of the idea or, or like they do, you know, percentage or whatever. So uh, th there's a lot of really great things with these metrics that we're capable of doing. Yeah. And you're just creating new channels of opportunity. You know, the metrics are yeah. the best. Well, one of the things is I'll give an example. What if I could tell you if I would say, okay, if, 
if you could claim a horse, let's just say, but I could tell you where you should place that horse and what your theoretical win percentage would be in that particular race. So you didn't enter a horse and then you find out that you have no chance after the fact. What if I could tell you that ahead of time? That would be wonderful, especially because it's a million, millions and millions of dollars investment in many cases, not only to buy the horse, but to keep the horse, you know, trained and right. all the medical and everything that goes into it. Right. Right. Well, we're going to be able to we're going to be able to predict where a horse should be based on the condition books throughout the country. We'll be able to predict you should enter this horse in here, your percentages, and then you can you can press a button and you can choose which race you want to enter your horse in. And uh, it because the biggest problem with owning is you go think you should put your horse in a particular race. And next thing you know, your horse is five percent to win. And I don't care how good it's training. It's five percent to win. <laughs> it is what it is. Yep. It is what it is. Scotty, any thought of any thought of starting um, one of those stable things where people can buy a percentage of a horse and, you know, they pay, you, you know who I'm referring to. I don't want to plug yeah. it, but there's yeah. a bunch of them that do it where the public can go in. They buy a certain it's like percentage a time of a share. horse and then it's, you know, just yeah, it's, like it's, it's, it's almost like a stock, a mutual fund. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, we're, we won't do that. But one of the things I'm thinking about doing actually, just to get everybody kind of pumped up with Equine Edge, you don't need it. It's not about the money, but I'm thinking about uh, maybe selling shares to Equine Edge. It's a possibility to get everybody kind of pumped into it. Um, there's plenty of syndicates out there already. So that's not the game I want to get into, but, yep. but, um, and, and there's a lot of them that do a good job. And, and honestly, the people that are doing it, I still think it's worth it because you get to enjoy and be part of something, but none of them are making any money. Chris, we're going to hit the number because we want to have this horse. How brilliant would that be to have a horse rocking the club colors flag, man, running around the track. And if you don't know this, if you have not yet watched any of our podcasts, first off, shame on you. Second, please do. But if you have watched him in the past, one of Chris and Jeff's favorite things in the whole world to say is, by the way, by the way, that's what they love. So I have a pretty strong feeling the horse will be named by the way. And I can't wait to hear an announcer ripping off by the way in between all the other horse names and hopefully the last yeah. call. <laughs> Speaking of well, numbers, let's, to seeing that let's well. get to numbers here, right? Let's get to numbers. So if... I understand that this is going to adjust because you probably are not going to make your final call on your final picks until minutes beforehand, right? But you've got enough data leading up to this to give a pretty good understanding. So if you're listening to this podcast and you've been kind enough to stick with us, let's get some picks from Scotty. These are not locks, okay? So don't be calling us up saying what the heck, right? These are very, very, very strong odds based on brilliant technology algorithms and metrics and subjectivity that Scott has worked his whole life to get to. Okay. So with that being said, what should I bet my mortgage on? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you five horses. Okay. And um, cause that I'm going to narrow it down to one of them. Uh, for sure is epicenter. I think this horse deserves a look for Steve Asmussen. Um, won the Louisiana Derby. This horse is uh, really, really running very, very good. Going to be near the pace. I think epicenter is one you really have to look at. Uh, of course, I told you about Charge It. I think Charge It for Todd Pletcher is another one you have to look at. Um, Guarantee my uh, wife will want to bet on that one. That's what uh, yeah, she does. Sure. She charges uh, it. I'm going to give you a well, here's a good one. Here's uh, Zozos is, uh, is I think, 30 to 1 on the morning line, but uh, we'll see what this one goes off at. But for Brad Cox, I mean, Zozos, this horse has only had three lifetime races and got a second in the Louisiana Derby. So if uh, if the horse gets in, I think uh, – did the horse get in actually, Chris? Yeah, Scott, he's in. I think he's post position 19. Okay. Um, well, big brown one from the 20 hole. So yeah, I mean, you never know. Um, but cyber knife is a, is a good one. I'll tell you that, uh, this one deserves a really good look for broad Brad Cox. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if this one actually really gets bet down as well. Um, I think cyber knife, I might between white Aberio and cyber knife, I might make, uh, uh, cyber knife my top pick. I'm not sure, but I do like white Aberio. And then, um, lastly, I'll give you Morello. 
I, I think Morello is a horse you have to look at. Um, this horse is – Scotty, Morello scratched. Oh, it's scratched. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me look here and let me see if I can give you one more. So Morello's out. I think they're going to run him in the Belmont. Something about Charge It just makes me feel good. Yeah, no, I, I think I think Charge It, and I, I really, I mean, by Tap It as well, too. So I like that breeding. And um, there's some really nice, uh, I'll take Charge, really nice bottom breeding as well. Um, and if I had to throw one more in there, if it's a wet track, Pioneer of Medina. So your mutter is Pioneer of Medina. And charge it's the other mutter. Charge it's good either surface, but charge it's the other mutter. Yeah, Scotty, and charge it, pull the eight hole, which is traditionally a very good uh, spot to be in, right in the middle. Yeah. And you're not going to get caught on the inside. What kind what of. What about Pioneer of Medina? What post did, uh, did that horse get? Pioneer Medina is in the 11 hole. I like that. I like that post. Yeah. What tri what typically is the best post to get? I know it it varies and I know it changes, but for the Kentucky Derby, what what post or posts tend to have the highest likelihood of success? Um I used to have this down. Hold on here. I might have it here. Bear with me. I I I, I wrote that down in the past because I had I was doing some research on a show that I did. And um, see if I still have it. I want to say, I, I can't find it, but I want to say the 14 post was a good one. The inside posts are brutal. They're, they're, they're brutal. Is that because they bang um, into each other? They, they just, it's just really tough into that first term with all those horses. They're usually, they're getting squeezed back. And then if they have speed, there's other horses with even more speed that are going that are faster. So they get worn out. It's just a really tough to be on the inside, unless you're lone speed, of course. If you're lone speed, which I don't know. I mean, did, is Forbidden Kingdom, Kingdom, did he get in there, Chris? No? No. Okay, well, that lightens the load on the speed because that horse was extremely fast. And, um, and by so the way, that Scotty, probably, pardon me? The, uh, the other speed horse, Classic Causeway, yeah. it drew the, drew the 17 hole. So... I would see. I like. I like posts anywhere from from eight to to probably fifteen. But here's the thing: if you've got post fifteen, it, you got to understand that's kind of a loaded question too, John, because it really depends on your speed, what post you have, right? So if you have, you just have to visualize the trip. And I think the pace position, the class, and the win percentages between all those and the GSR, you can kind of look there and go, okay, this horse has this kind of speed, is in this post. And you have to visualize that and um, where a horse is starting, right? So in the starting point there, they're at a, a Calgary stampede, basically, in the beginning of that race, right? Trying to get position. And if you have no speed, you're going to have to go back and you're going to lose ground. Then you're going to have to cut in. I mean, you've ran a bunch of links more, so you better be way the best. So, so why Equin Edge? Because there's no way for me to calibrate and think about right and memorize and remember all of this two days before a race when I have a better race all year. There's no way for you to possibly look at these things and have any chance of success on your own where you've got to take in all of these factors, the weather, the track, the jockey, the horse, the races they ran before, their travel, their medical situation, uh, their pole position. I mean, all of these factors coming in, and these are not machines, right? This is not like racing cars where it's like, well, the car is running nice today, right? This is this is an animal uh, that could That's do right. a whole bunch of things. Uh, so this is just this is like the cheat sheet, man. This is the cliff notes to success in uh, horse racing. I love it. You know, and also, guys, I would I would I would look for a horse that you know when you you look at a horse like Smile Happy. This did this horse get in, Chris? Yes, I know they post just drew post five. positions. So sorry, guys. I I had no. Yeah. I don't know what the post positions are. By the way, they, if yeah. you don't know, Scotty has a daughter getting married this week. 
So this is a man right yeah. now on fire. One of the biggest weeks of the year. <laughs> and then you've got the <laughs> Kentucky Derby as well. <laughs> it's the other way. Normally, he's got the Derby's the big week. Now he's got this beautiful daughter getting married, too. No, no, listen, it gets worse than that. So my daughter's <laughs> getting married on Friday, okay? And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I'm like, I, this is just this is just brutal. So then I'm like, okay. Then I, I, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I can watch the Derby on Saturday. So then Anna, my girlfriend, she's going, of course, and we're going to California. And then we're flying out on Sunday. So I'm I'm good. I'm going to set up my computers, the TVs. I'm, I'm good to go. Then... Anna says to me, well, it's Mother's Day on Sunday. Yes. We have to come back on Saturday. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in the air. Looks like I, a I'm 2 a.m. flight. Oh, you're get your oh no! <laughs> you're gonna miss the race. Well, guess what? You've got uh you you can record it and just pray to God that nobody sends you a text message. There's no way though, you're gonna know. You're gonna know. You'll know. No, no, it's it's just brutal. It's brutal. But I, you know, that's my life right now. And it's all good. So I'm just, uh, I'm excited to go and uh, hang out with family and see my daughter get married. There's a man with purpose right there. This is his biggest that's passion, right. but he puts family first. So, hey, that's good character, right? That's good character. I'm going to get in a bet, though. You know I'm going to get oh, in at yeah. least the night before. Oh, yeah. You may kiss the bride. Hang on a second. I'm betting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, listen, we thank you so much for taking the time to come on here. Um what is next for uh, for you? What should we be looking out for after Sunday? What's the big thing? What should we be looking out for? And those of you uh, that want to follow Scotty, how can they do so? So they can go to equinedge.com. That's, that's one thing. And you get a free week. You can uh, follow me at, at ScottyPick6, um, at Equinedge on Twitter. And uh, also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Equine Edge Live, which will give you all notifications of shows. Uh, of course, when you subscribe to Equine Edge, which is for free, of course, you can uh, get you'll get notifications as well. So that helps. My Equine Edge Live show is fantastic. Like Chris was saying earlier, thank you, Chris. The the coaching classes are are incredible because I'm handicapping live races, but it's a smaller setting, and people are asking questions where it's a little bit tougher when I'm doing my my show. And, um, and then what you can look for is literally almost every week we're releasing new stuff on Equine Edge because we want this platform to be the, the craziest thing anybody's ever seen. And until everybody, until you can't leave our site, that everywhere you go on our site, you get everything you want, we haven't done our job. That's my goal. That's a fantastic goal. Chris, this has been uh, something you've been you've been uh, excited about, couldn't wait. So, hey, look, take us home. What's What's the final question? Listen, I, I think in a lot of ways, it, it's more of a thank you uh, from your just everyday guy that loves to bet the horses. It's just a word of appreciation. Um, this has been a tool that has uh, rekindled my passion for the sport just because you lose track of it. If you're not following it, you know, you don't have the tools at your fingertips to just jump back in and you've made it easy to jump back in. So appreciate everything you're doing. Um, you know, you're always on the run. Even during the, the shows, I think you're on with Brad. Like, hey, we need to make this change, do this change. So it's obviously your passion. Thank you again. Um, by the way, I'll give you my three top horses if you want to box them. So, again, you know, no no guarantees. But um, I think Messier with the six hole, I think, can get to the front and has a lot of speed. Um, I love Cyberknife. I think that horse fits. And I'm going to give you my long shot, uh, the land of the rising sun, baby. A little crown pride. I've been I've been high on this horse, and I'm hoping. Uh, I, well, by the way, I was high on Mendelssohn too, and that horse did absolutely nothing in the Derby. So, um, those those are the horses. By the way, that's a six seven sixteen exact the box. You know, and I will and I will say this on that note: try not to get caught up on on maybe the horse. Like, look to see the trip a horse is going to get. Like, if you look at the metrics and you see pace. Uh, and then look to visualize how okay how that's all going to play out. Like if there's a lot of speed in the race, and with Forbidden Kingdom going out, that that does lighten up the the pace a little bit. So you know, but look at look at a horse normally that's somewhat tactical that can sit five, six, seven lengths back, right? But has the class, has the win percentage, has the GSR that's bred, which means bred to go that distance. Um, just look for that stuff. I, it really comes down to like Chris was saying earlier, pace and trip. Pace and trip. Yeah. Yeah. 
And Scotty, real quick, uh, just a quick plug for you. I think you're doing a Kentucky Derby handicapping show. I can't remember what day you're saying, but I think it's Wednesday or Thursday. If folks want to tune in. Yes, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, it'll go to, I'll be emailing that to my team will be emailing that probably in the next day or so, but it'll be, it'll be Wednesday or Thursday for sure. Perfect. You could go right from Scotty's show to this episode of In the Club, powered by Club Colors. Scotty, Chris, you have been in the club. Hey, thank you so much for checking us out today. By the way, here's your pick from the eight hole. Charge it. This is what I'm going with. We're going with charge it. If it's a dry day, if it's a wet day, our mutters are still charge it or pioneer of Medina from the 11 hole. We look forward to hearing from you on Monday after you've gone shopping with your winnings and you're super excited. And by the way, you want a great place to shop? DM me. Check out Club Colors, www.clubcolors.com. We've got you covered when it comes to branded apparel, promotional products. Be well. Good luck in the Derby. Scotty, congratulations on your family, your family event. Chris, thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Ah, yes. In the Club, powered by Club Colors, is proud to be sponsored by Fossa Apparel. All guests on In the Club will receive a gift from Fossa Apparel. Check them out at fossaapparel.com.